Orangasm. I'm Kristen and this is episode 277. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you are a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. And this is a podcast about mainly knitting, sewing, and pretty much making all the things in Brooklyn, New York, where I'm from. And I live with my husband, Dennis, and our adorable cat, Bella. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about those things with me. If you would like to follow me on social media, I am at Volenvine on Instagram, where I'm most active and you can follow me on Ravelry. I'm Volenvine on there as well. Uh, show notes for this episode and every other episode can be found over on the blog at uh, www.yarngasmpodcast.com. And if you have any questions or want to share projects or what have you, hop on over to the Ravel, the Yarngasm Ravelry group. It's the place to be if you want to chat about this episode, other episodes, share your whips, your FOs, uh, ask questions about the podcast, um, and pretty much all things yarngasm. So hop on over there and check it out. But anyway, I think that covers all my bases. So without further ado, let's get into what I've been making this week. So as I mentioned, last week I was kind of in a knitting slash making slump, so to speak. Uh, everything that I was working on just... I just was not feeling it. So uh, I just, I was craving a new cast on. So I had a couple of patterns in mind. I actually went stash diving and found a, a trio of colorways for my stash that I thought would make a really cool fade uh, or just project in general. I really like the way that the colors are playing together. It was a skein of La Bienne Me in Dusk, uh, Woolen Rabbit in Chocolate Chambord, and this really gorgeous skein of, it was a one of a kind color by Stranded Dye Works, my friend Amy. So. Um, I got those together, I skeined them, I caked them up and everything, and I had been wanting to cast on the Mysteries She Wrote shawl by Suzanne Sommer, who is So Sue Knits, uh, and yeah, so that was the plan. I was like, okay, I'm gonna cast this on, I've been wanting to knit this for a while. I cast on, and then I realized there just wasn't enough contrast happening. So I got to the part where I, I knit one little triangle. I'll pop a photo of the pattern here so you know what I'm talking about, but I got past one little triangle and realized that there just was not enough contrast. And that just added fuel to the fire, if that made any sense, uh, <laughs> or just maybe the reverse, like it just put out the fire even more. Um, that probably makes more sense. But anyway, you get what I'm talking about. I was just even more frustrated after that. I was like, ah, what can I cast on? So then I did a little more, you know, browsing through the Ravelry like you do. I uh, came across the Bobbles shawl by Andrea Maori, another pattern that I really want to knit. Um, so I, I downloaded that one and purchased and downloaded that one and then I cast it on and then realized that it requires a lot of mental power. <laughs> see where I'm going. Um, so yeah, that was a little discouraging. I, I totally want to knit these patterns. Um, However, I just have to be in the right frame of mind to cast on and pay attention to the increases that are involved and the special techniques. So that that left me with, um, you know, uh, another um, conundrum that I was in. So uh, there was another shawl that I had in mind, which was the Smocket shawl, a new pattern by Stephen West. Uh, so you know that was a new that was a pattern on my radar that I really wanted to cast on. And looking at the trio of yarn that I had, I realized okay, there was just not enough contrast in it, and one of these things just did not belong. Um, so unfortunately, I I removed the stranded dye works uh yarn which is totally fine because I, honestly i really wanted to do something else with that skein because i have another coordinating skein of mohair to go along with it so that those two were just meant to go together so i'm, I'm gonna rescheme that and keep that back in my stash for another special project because it is a beautiful colorway so i went back to stash diving and found a really gorgeous skein by skein queen uh, another skein of yarn that i purchased over at the edinburgh yarn festival put it into the mix and thought Oh, I found a fae that actually work really works together. You know, I kept like the mauve slash purple slash gray speckle thing happening. So anyway, I cast it on and it just clicked. It was exactly what my my knitting soul needed. If that makes any sense, it was just there were you know just very simple increases on every other row and just plain knit 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 pearl pearl knit knit pearl pearl. It was just it. It was exactly what I needed. So anyway, um, yeah, you can see how far I've I've got in this pattern. So I've already started to fade it, and it's going to go like this, I think. So yeah, and it's just very simple 
A lot of people were asking me, is there brioche in this pattern? Th there is absolutely no brioche in this pattern. So if you are still like still dabbling your toes in brioche or just not comfortable knitting brioche yet, and this is totally an awesome doable project. If you can knit and you can purl, you can totally do this project. So you can see I started to fade over here. So here is the La Bienna Mate color. I started with the lightest color in her Dusk colorway and here's Skein Queen. So yeah, I'm starting to fade that in. Then it's all gonna go into Skein, into the Skein Queen color, which is I believe is called um, Mountain, Mountain Heather. So here it is caked up so you can see. Yeah, it's just really, really pretty. Um, and then it's all gonna fade into this really gorgeous um, skein of wool and rabbit. So then when all is said and done, I'm done fading, I'm gonna pick up all these little uh, selvage stitches along the bottom here and knit the border. So uh, the border has uh, is a separate, I, I'm assuming, chart. Um, and you just knit straight across back and forth back and forth so it's not an applied border it's just you know picking up stitches along the edge and then knitting out from that so um yeah highly recommend it. it this is this has been saving my sanity like all week long and weekend um it's again it's exactly what i needed and i have let me see this little progress keeper right here from three kleine shop yes um who is jennifer uh who i met at edinburgh i met her i met Carla and Jennifer at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. So hi guys, um, and we did a swap, and she included these really fun little um, snow globe progress keepers. So it just makes me so happy whenever I, you know, look at it. But anyway, um, yeah, and I'm using US size five, which I'm gonna guess I'm gonna see how good my millimeter needle memory is. So like if a US six is four millimeters, then a US 5 must be a 3.5 millimeter. So let me see if I'm correct. Am I correct? I can't even read that anymore. I'll put it in the down bar, but I think I'm correct. 3.5 millimeter needles. If not, I'll just correct it in the down bar. But anyway, yeah, I'm just using simple, simple clover um, needles that I got at Michael's, one of those, you know, big box stores. So big box craft stores. <sighs> anyway, so yeah, that that's my, um, my smocket shawl and I'm having so much fun with it and yeah um, I know I have a lot of other patterns on the go right now I have shawl designs I'm just my heart's not in it right now so I'm, I'm just letting that happen uh, and knitting on what makes me happy because knitting should you, you, like that's what knitting's for knitting should make you happy you shouldn't feel forced to work on something you don't want to work on um, and yeah, and shawl design is something that I do for fun. It's not my primary source of income. So it's just something that I'm dabbling on on the side uh, and when I feel like working on it. And yeah, I, I will come back to it and finish it when I feel like finishing it. So um, yeah, and I do have some I do have some cardigans on the go. I have my Like a Cloud cardigan by Hoki Locatelli. And then I also have my Belmont cardigan by Gudrun Johnston, which I am going to get back to at some point. Um, but right now I'm just feeling, I feel like casting on all the things because it's really bad. Um, and I also really want to cast on the Rose Cardi uh, by Andrea Mowry. So, yeah, I'll talk a little bit more about that in um, in shop update, but uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I might be suffering from a bit of cast on itis or start itis at this point, but you know what? I'm embracing it. I'm just going with it. So um, yeah. So that is my knitting for the week. I've been very monogamous with my smocket shawl. Uh, I've just been loving every minute of it and every stitch and just having fun knitting it. So I'm going to move along to mail because I got some really nice stuff in the mail, you guys, um, including this really beautiful postcard. And I wish I could tell you who it's from um, <laughs> because I really don't know. It's it's such her note was just so lovely. Um, and I really, really loved getting this. So if, if you're watching the podcast, um, please let me know who you are because I cannot unfortunately read. You wrote your um, your Instagram handle on here. However, it's half covered by the stamp that the post office put on it. And then I just cannot read your handwriting at the end. So I apologize. Um, but I want, I want to, you know, reach out and thank you for this really beautiful, um, 
postcard, she said that it reminded her of um, A Court of Thorns and Roses and she had to send it to me. So thank you, thank you so much. This was absolutely beautiful to get in the mail and it totally reminds me of um, A Court of Thorns and Roses, but here is the postcard. It's really, really pretty. Um, and it's by, the artwork is by Karima, Karima Kamel. Uh, K-A-R-I-M-A-C-A-M-M-E-L-L -L, and uh, the image is called Forest. So um, in case you are interested in this print yourself. But anyway, really special to get in the mail. Thank you so much, whoever you are. Again, please contact me, let me know who you are so I can properly thank you. Um, and yeah, so anyway, yay, there's that. And then uh, Laura of uh, Jinx Yarns and I did a swap like we do. Uh, so, uh, she, you know, I was watching Amy of Stranded Dye Works and she had knit a pair of socks using uh, Jinx Yarns uh, Graffiti colorway, which is a self-striping uh, yarn. And I was just like, do you have an extra scheme for me? So um, of course she did. and. I got a skein of it. So thank you so much, Alara. This colorway is awesome. So it's just a really awesome, uh, high contrast, self-striping yarn, uh, stripes of black, and then multicolors throughout. So um, the stripe pattern is four rows of black, four rows of gray, four rows of variegated, number one, lots of numbers. But anyway, lots of variegation happening in the stripes. Um, and yeah, this is her Glitz Sock self-striping uh, in graffiti, So, and it's sparkle. So it sparkles, yay! Always love sparkles. Sparkles make everything better, in my humble opinion. So yeah, that is mail. <sighs> Which brings us along to sewing. So <laughs> um, I do have some sewing to share with you guys. You might notice I'm a bit on the, on the, on the casual side today. Uh, I'm wearing a simple black t-shirt, which yes, yes I sewed. I made it myself. Um, and it's, there's a lot more going on to this than just a plain t-shirt. Uh, however, this is the, I will stand up so you can see it. So yeah. And you guys, I'm wearing jeans. Who the heck am I? Who am I? I'm wearing jean shorts, but you know, as I mentioned in the last episode, I, during the summers, I do tend to wear shorts in summer. So not totally unusual, but anyway, I'm wearing jean shorts today and this awesome top that I made called the Celia uh, knot tee. So you're not gonna be able to see it very well, but there's a knot at the side and then this interesting seam going up the front and side of the, um, the front. I don't know if I'm too crazy about that detail, but it's black, it's black jersey. You can't really see it, but anyway. And then it has like set in sleeves. It's very comfortable. It's a very comfortable tee. Um, I did have a couple of issues cutting out the pattern pieces. Um, again, I, this is the uh, Celia Knot Tee by Named Patterns. I don't think I mentioned that at the top of the segment, but anyway, yeah, it's by Named Patterns. And, um, you know, ideally, like this would be a very simple construction, but the problems that I encountered while sewing this uh, was number one with the pattern. So firstly, I purchased the PDF pattern. So with the PDF pattern, you print out all the pattern pieces and then you puzzle them, piece them together, and then you cut out the pattern pieces. So I printed it out, taped all the pieces together, and then looked at you know what I was dealing with and realized that the, the way that they printed the pieces uh, were overlapping. So basically they instructed you to piece together all the pieces, piece to get, tape together all the, the papers together, and then trace the pattern pieces on after that. So that was kind of a headache. I mean, I don't understand. I, I could see like how they would want to save, um, how they would want to save paper by overlapping all the pattern pieces on the printout. However, you're still using paper to trace over the PDF, pa the PDF printout if that makes sense. So um, I'm not really sure what the method behind their madness was there, but that just added a whole another level of work that I had to do after that. So uh, just something to be aware about when you're printing out uh, named patterns. Uh, so yeah, after you're done taping all the pieces together, you're probably gonna have to, uh, especially with this pattern, trace over <laughs> certain pattern pieces um, after doing all that work. So just a little heads up. That was a little, that was, that was actually really annoying. So there was that. And then the other problem that I encountered was, uh, you know, just dealing with jersey fabric in general. It, um, this is organic cotton uh, jersey fabric, so 
it, this particular uh, fabric in general kind of like rolls up on itself, kind of like, you know, stockinette, when you knit stockinette. Um, if you just knit a plain square of stockinette, the edges are gonna roll up on each, uh, roll up on itself. So Jersey knit is the same exact concept. It's gonna roll up on itself on the edges because yeah, if you look really close at Jersey fabric, it's, it's knit. Kind of like, you know, stockinette. Um, so in case you were not aware of that, I don't know, I just felt I need to explain that. Um, so yeah, that was a little bit of a challenge. Uh, so there's that. And then the other issue that I encountered was the neckline. So in the pattern, the neckline is a little bit more close to the neck. I'm not very comfortable with having my neck that covered. I don't know. Like I, I this is my preferred neckline, like a, a nice, good uh, boat slash scoop neck, if that makes sense. Um, so I followed the instructions for the neckline and I cut out the strip and that was a headache in itself. And then the the neckband didn't exactly fit. Um, they the pattern's instructed to pin the neckband to the neckline of the shirt and then ease you know the edges together and that was just such a nightmare and of course i messed it up while sewing it and then i said you know what i'm gonna treat it like a normal t-shirt that i would get and just cut the neckline off so it's kind of you know a scoop neck so i basically conducted t-shirt surgery to my own t-shirt that i sewed so anyway um i really like the way it turned out i didn't i don't even have a neckband applied to here i really just um i don't know if you can see zigzag stitched it you know down so I didn't even finish the ends, I just kind of tacked it down and sewed and very happy with the way it turned out. Um, and I love the knot detail. I love t-shirts with knots at the end. I don't know why I, you know, I'm not a huge t-shirt wearer, but I love details like that when it comes to t-shirts. I think I will make it again in, you know, obviously different fabric. Uh, it's definitely something, you know, good to have a staple piece to have in my wardrobe. Um, yeah, again, I'm trying to build myself a summer capsule wardrobe. So I want to sew some shorts and, you know, a couple of other summery pieces uh, that I can add to, to my summer wardrobe. Yay! So that is it for sewing. I am gonna move along to shop update because I'm having an update tomorrow, June 29th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So let me go get the yarn that'll be in the shop. Okay, so a couple of exciting announcements before I get into what colors are going to be in the shop this week. Uh, we have a new base, yay! Uh, so as you know, I mentioned last week that I am going to be fading out Infinite Lace, which is 100% uh, Superwash Blue Face Luster. Um, that is going to be no more. Uh, I'm, I'm still going to be dyeing it while supplies last, but um, just know that uh, I am going to be fading that base out. And I am replacing it with some sport weight yarn and here is a skein of it uh a skein of solstice dyed on my new sport weight base which i'm lovingly calling sportlandia <laughs> like think about uh port the show portlandia but i'm calling it sportlandia because why not i i, I thought that name was really fun so I'm, I'm going with it um so yeah here is solstice on sportlandia and it is 100 percent uh superwash merino uh, and it is 328 yards, 300 meters, 100 gram skein, 100 grams per skein. So uh, it's a really, really super soft, squishy, really squishy yarn uh, that I just really fell in love with. And I think you guys will too. There are actually a lot of new patterns out cropping up that are sport weight, uh, including the Rose Cardi, which I am totally casting on. I actually dyed myself kind of like a gradient. There was one, um, I'm, I'm going off I'm going off on totally different tangents here, but um, I was one, um, but somebody on Instagram posted a photo of a fade that they made out of my out of my yarn, and I was like, that is such a cool combination of colors, something that I would never think to put together. Uh, again, my, my customers have excellent taste. Um, they, they inspire me a lot sometimes. And <laughs> so I saved the photo, and I actually reposted it on Instagram if you wanna take a look. I'll pop a photo of it here, um, but I hope they don't mind. But anyway, um, yeah, so I decided to dye that same color combination this week, and uh, with the intention of casting on the Rose Cardi, because uh, when I went to Do You Knit, uh, Karen had it on display, and it was knit out of sport weight yarn. I partially blame her for getting me to dye uh, start dyeing sport weight yarn. So Karen, it's all your fault. <laughs> so anyway, um, I saw a sample hanging in the shop and I was just like, I, I really want to knit that now. So, um, 
yeah, we got sport weight yarn. And so far I've been getting a lot of great feedback. A lot of you on Instagram have been uh, letting me know how excited you are for the sport weight. So that makes me happy. Uh, but yes, without further ado, we are going to have some solstice in the shop. And here it is on Volca. Um, and that's another announcement that I wanted to chat about with you guys. Uh, this week, I am only dyeing on Volca, which is my superwash merino nylon cashmere base fingering, uh, Sportlandia, and Nouveau. So Nouveau is my uh, single ply merino yarn. Uh, so the idea is uh, to alternate between weeks where I do updates of only you know, either Volca or Volca Nouveau and Sportlandia. And then the following week, I'll only do sock yarn. So like Blitz, Footsie, and maybe Socklandia, throwing something into the mix. So if that makes any sense, like one week I will have a uh, quote unquote sweater, garment, accessory friendly yarn, such as Volca, um, Nouveau, and Sportlandia, because I know a lot of people like to use those yarns to knit accessories and garments. Uh, and then the following week I will have pretty much just footsie and blitzed my sock, quote unquote sock, uh, sock friendly basis, if that makes sense. So, uh, you know, the idea behind that is just, uh, I know a lot of you have trouble acquiring sweater quantities from my updates. And I'm, I'm thinking that this will kind of help make more sweater quantities available for updates. So it'll up your chances of getting a whole sweater quantities worth, uh, in an update. Um, even if you want, you know, to use my footsie base or sparkle base to knit a garment, you can do that as well. So I hope that all makes sense and you guys are excited for that. Um, again, I'm experimenting. Uh, so, you know, one week sweater yarn, the following week sock yarn, the following week sweater yarn, back and forth, back and forth. So, you know, hope I hope I explained that clearly. But anyway, um, you know, let me know your thoughts. Uh, so anyway, uh, yes. So solstice will be in the shop. Um, and then I will also have succulents. This is back this week. That's uh, totally blowing up the camera, but it's just a really delicate, um, a really delicate, uh, green colorway. Kind of like, I would say jadeite. Yeah, it's, it's a jadeite color, uh, but I'm calling it succulents. So, and I'm totally rambling. So there's that. And then I will have some Edinburgh back in the shop. And here it is on Socklandia. And here it is on the, uh, sorry, uh, Volca. And then I will have some Grimm. Done a whole lot of Grimm this week. Uh, mainly because uh, not only have I been getting requests for it, but um, Renee Callahan just released this gorgeous pattern called Witching Hour using Grim in, in Volca. So I decided to dye a whole, a whole bunch of this. So for any of you wanting to knit that pattern, um, there will be lots of Volca in the shop uh, this week. So yay, there's that. And let me see, this week I also uh, dyed up, I'm going to be dyeing up some more uh, yarn from uh, the Curious Handmade Impressionists. MCAL pattern that um, I collaborated with Helen Stewart on. So I've been getting, I, I took a break only because I was dying so much, so much of these colors. It was Curious, Solstice, Thaw. Um, I needed to take a little bit of, of a break from dying those colors, but um, I'm back at it this week. So in, if you wanted to get your mitts on these colors, they will be in the shop. Uh, I Right now I still have to dye Curious, but um, I have Thaw and Solstice right now to show you, and I'll pop a photo in here so you can see what the trio look like together. But um, yeah, those will be in the shop, and I, of course, will have those on Nouveau, uh, Volca, and Socklandia. So there's that. Um, and then I will also have some Dirty on Purpose, and I will also have <laughs> um, Weep. So uh, expect those colors to be in the shop tomorrow. Uh, but I also have some super exciting news as well. Um, I don't know if too many of you are familiar with Countess Ablaze, but she's another fellow indie dyer from Manchester. Super talented. I love all her colorways. I just wish shipping was not a pain in the ass. So <laughs> otherwise I'd be shopping her website all the time. She has like really awesome colors. Um, and I actually introduced myself to her at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. I was totally fangirling. Um, and she just started podcasting, which I'm super excited about. Uh, but she, um, started this movement on Instagram. I don't know if you've caught wind of it, but it's called the hashtag tits out collective. Yes, I said tits, <laughs> but 
it's this all came about i'm not going to get into the whole story behind it i will link to the story behind it in the show notes on her blog uh but basically she had an incident where um her shop was like a victim of misogyny and uh somebody wanted her to donate her time and her her yarn for a charity uh for you know all her work for free and all she would get in return was exposure and basically that was not that was not acceptable in her opinion and i totally agree so she created a colorway called if i want exposure i'll get my tits out um and she all the proceeds that she made from selling these this colorway went directly to women's charity long story short somebody copied this color without her knowing you know without her permission or anything and she's like you know what i'm not going to get mad at this person because that's not going to solve anything so and what did she do she just like opened the door to other indie dyers uh invited them to create the same colorway uh with the, with the exception that whatever money they make from selling these skeins uh goes to a charity of their choosing um she created a whole list of rules you know like just to keep things fair and um you know some order of semblance to this whole idea and she wasn't expect she didn't plan this at all it just blew you know this whole hashtag tits out collective took over the instagram and a lot many many indie dyers are hopping on the wagon and partaking in hashtag tits out collective and i could not resist yeah there are some charities i would love to be able to donate to and i thought this was the perfect opportunity to uh partake in that so i i created my own version of if i want exposure i will get my tits out so let me go get the colorway which is right here um yeah and i <laughs> Totally out of my comfort zone as far as a color is concerned, but I had a lot of fun dyeing it. She actually posted the color, the the acid dyes that she used to create this color. Um, again, all these indie dyers, again, she gave full permission for indie dyers to copy her um, with, with the uh, intention of donating a portion of the proceeds to a charity of our choosing. So, um, here is my contribution to hashtag, hashtag uh, tits out collective and yeah again the colorway is called if i want exposure i will get my tits out so yay and this colorway will only be available on my footsie base which is uh superwatch bfl nylon and uh my blitz base which is superwatch merino nylon and uh gold stellina so and there you have it uh these will be available in the shop uh starting sunday july 1st at 10 a.m eastern time uh that is when all of the indie dyers are going to list their yarns for sale and just to be totally transparent uh 50 percent of all the sales made on this colorway will be going to planned parenthood my charity of choice uh because i believe women deserve affordable uh reproductive health care and education and access to birth control and that's just something that's very important to me and i know a lot of you as well so um you know yeah i'm i'm, I'm super excited to be a part of this so uh i had a lot of fun dyeing this colorway and thank you so much to Lindsay, who is the countess uh for starting this awesome movement so I'm excited and hope you guys are too. So that is shop update. I hope you guys can make it uh, as I mentioned. Uh, tomorrow's update will be just the, uh, not tomorrow's update will just include the colorways uh, that I showed you earlier, not the, the tits out color. Um, so just FYI and wow, I feel very scattered this week guys. So I apologize if my brain is like all over the place, but um, you know, it's been a busy week <laughs> and uh, I am so looking forward to the weekend. Uh, Dennis actually has, the day off tomorrow but i don't so <laughs> i've got it. he wanted to go to the beach but i'm like i just have way too much work to do so we're, we're probably gonna go on saturday and i guess i'm kind of moving into blather where which is a segment where i chat about what's been happening in my life should you care to stick around um and i need i need a kombucha break guys uh yeah no tea today we're drinking we're drinking kombucha uh this is multi-green not endorsed just a fan but I drink the stuff. It's good. It's really good. So, okay. So as far as what's been going on in my life, as I mentioned, there may be a beach trip this weekend. I don't know, but I will be slathering on the SPF 110 maybe. So uh, as we did last weekend, uh, Dennis and I got out, we went to 
our our annual um, pilgrimage, if you want, want to call it, to the Jamaica Bay Wildlife Refuge. Uh, this is a nature preserve that's about maybe like a 20 minute drive from our house in Brooklyn. It's just this really cute little trail that they have over, uh, I think, it, I believe it's close to the Rockaways. Um, and it's in Brooklyn, or maybe like the cusp of Queens in Brooklyn. I don't know. It's like, it's, it's, in that area. I'm so geographically impaired, but you know, it's, it might be in Brooklyn, it might be in Queens, but yeah, it's close to Rockaway, which is in Queens. Anyway, I digress. We went to, we went to the Jamaica Bay Wildlife Refuge, and yeah, as I mentioned, it's something we end up doing every year once the weather starts getting warmer, and we just kind of hike around the trail, and it's really pretty. You get to see like all these, you know, natural flowers, wildflowers that are native to the area, and um, some birds, you see a lot of, there were a lot of swans, a lot of Canadian geese, um, some really beautiful, like brightly little colored birds, like yellow ones, and, um, the turtles were nesting, yet, though I have yet to actually see a live turtle while walking around there, um, yeah, and, you know, as I mentioned, I'm not an outdoorsy person by any means, but this trail is tame enough for me to just be like, okay, just walk around and we can go. Um, and I brought my camera, so I got to take some photos, which was really fun. Um, and Dennis got some photos of me knitting, which was really great, because I feel like I don't have enough photos of myself actually sitting and knitting. Um, I should, I really want to start taking more of those, because I don't know what I look like when I knit. <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> so that was totally random. But uh, yeah, so we went there, and then... Yeah, I, I, we, we had to totally cover ourselves in suntan lotion and bug spray because the, the mosquitoes, they were out. Um, so yeah, but that was fun. Um, we barbecued, that was really fun. And yeah, so what else is new? Blog. I'm, I'm working on my blog. As I mentioned last week, I want to start blogging again. Uh, I feel like blogging is definitely making a comeback because... I feel like every podcast, every other podcast that I've watched or listened to, somebody, I, I know Ellie from Skander Knit said she was thinking about getting back into blogging and I don't know, just, I feel like it's making a comeback, which is exciting. So I've been working on the site. Um, so I, I'm, I don't want to call myself a perfectionist, but I've just been like fine tuning, you know, the look of it. I want it to be like this really nice place, if you will. So I'm, I'm very happy with the way it's looking right now. And I just kind of want to build up a couple of entries before I like release it into the world, you know, just to kind of get myself in the mode. Um, it's just something that I'm going to be do. I'm going to be try, I'm going to try to blog daily. So just a little something for me to do every morning, you know, like how some people have their morning pages and, you know, just kind of write, 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 write for 15 minutes, whatever, it's like a stream of consciousness for 15 minutes every morning. I kind of want to use my blog as something like that, if that makes sense. Uh, but I'm not going to write like huge paragraphs or pages because I can't even handle reading that much in one sitting. So <laughs> uh, I'm going to keep them small, quick, pithy, to the point. Um, you know, just use it as a space to chat about, you know, my other creative exploits, um, share my photography, which I'm practicing a lot now. Um, and just, you know, some creative musings and other, you know, like weaving and, you know, sewing and, and all that stuff. So hopefully it'll be like a really fun place to just document all, all those things. Uh, so yeah, um, I'm hoping maybe, maybe I'm, I'm going to aim to uh, kind of publish the whole blog on, on Sunday, June 1st. So it'll be kind of like a kickstart to blogging every day in the month of July. So yeah, um, I'm, I'm excited about that. So yay. Um, anyway, yeah, more on that to come. So otherwise I, as I mentioned, I'm working, I'm dabbling in photography again. So I started binge watching all my favorite, uh, photography vlogs on YouTube. Um, I did take a couple of craftsy classes on YouTube for photography, but honestly, I don't know. I, it, they're very cut and dry. They're not, you know, I, I just, they found, I found them helpful, but I couldn't really, my, I just found my brain kind of, it's a lot of information to take in. So I, what I did find really, really helpful is just following these uh, photographers on YouTube. Uh, a lot of them have their own YouTube channels where they, they vlog, they, um, they do tutorials, they, do all these challenges which are a lot of fun and that's the key it's like they they are just so fun to watch and in the process i just feel like i'm learning so much from them um 
And yeah, I will link to some of my favorites in the show notes. Um, I know there's, uh, what's her name? Uh, Jessica Kobies Kobisi, I think her name is. Uh, Brandon Wolfel, uh, Mango Street, Peter McKinnon. Uh, they're just all, so they, they make learning photography so much fun and their styles are amazing, their way of shooting and editing. Um, so yeah, I've been having a lot of fun diving that down that rabbit hole. So, um, you know, definitely check them out. So that said, I think I'm going to end things there. I believe it's lunchtime. It is. It is lunchtime. So I'm going to go uh, eat something and get editing this and get ready for the weekend. So that said, happy knitting and I will see you next time. Oh, and if you like this episode, please like and subscribe below and leave a comment because I really do enjoy hearing from you. So happy knitting and I'll see you next time. Bye. Ba -da -da.